Share Shootout brought to you by Line of Africa Insurance, ensuring South Africa's future. Welcome back to Share Shootout here on CNBC Africa First with Business Worldwide. Before the break, Nick and Lance both gave us their share picks. We got from Nick Norman Smith, Hoskin Consolidated Investments, better known as HCI, very attractive gambling and media assets. Oh no, says Lance Williams, not good enough for me. I am better than that. Uh, and then in Parlour Platinum Holdings, he nearly rolled on the floor laughing. He thought that the, he, he thought Nick Norman Smith was joking. How could anybody possibly be choosing Impala Platinum at such low levels? Well, the story is compelling, the valuation is compelling, but are the fundamentals against Impala for the time being? Certainly, that is Lance's view this evening. Then Lance Williams from iCapital, he chose Standard Bank and Remgro. Nick Norman Smith accepted Standard Bank, which means that Nick Norman Smith goes into this next round with a degree of comfort, which Lance doesn't have. Nick Lewis, this being the second round, you go first. And I'm fascinated to see the body language, whether he goes into a fetal position and starts rocking and begging for mum's nougat, or whether he goes, thank goodness I waited. Because in 30 seconds, the construction sector, they've been paying admission of guilt fines to the competition uh, tribunal. They're not getting any decent pipelines of work. Any work that they are getting is happening at margins of that a baker wouldn't accept on a loaf of bread, never mind anybody else. So please explain to me why you think Avenge in 30 seconds is a good idea. Sure, this is exactly why, and this is why you're buying it at a discounted book. This is the biggest construction company in the country. It's um, got a net cash position of around 4 billion rand, so a strong balance sheet. Um, it's in a sector that's been under a lot of pressure. That That is, uh, no one's denying that. Um, but the sector will clear out just like the platinum sector and the cycle will turn. There's some big governmental infrastructure infrastructure projects which will eventually have to uh, come through from government, it may take a while, and uh, it's got a nice, uh, around half of its portfolio is in Australia and Asia and offshore, so a nice range uh, as well. Okay, alright, there we go. So what do you say to that one, Lance? Are you glad you waited? Uh, <laughs> no, not really. I don't really <laughs> like building stocks. I don't like um, highly cyclical shares. Avenge is most probably the been the best managed and best run of the construction companies in South Africa. They do have a lot of those virtues that you mentioned. Um, they, they seem to be well poised to take advantage of any upturn in the building sector. There is a, a big infrastructure drive in South Africa. But we've been hearing big infrastructure drive in South Africa since 2009, 2010. The 800 billion rand that was set aside in the budget of two or three years ago. The same number keeps being regurgitated, but we don't see any huge evidence of these huge infrastructure projects coming through. I think the pressure is mounting. The South African government realizes that they need to get the country right. One side of that is the labor equation, which they're working hard on. Um, very prickly situation. Uh, the other side is the infrastructure spend to create the, inv the, the platform for a growing economy going forward. So I think that pressure will come to pass. It is extremely difficult to do business with a government though mm. at the same time. So I acknowledge that. Um, as I say, I don't really like these type of investments because they're highly cyclical and they go from boom to bust. Um, but Avenge, as I said, relative to its competitors, uh, most probably would be my top pick in that sector. Avenge relative to Impala and HCI? Are you thinking back and thinking, HCI actually is not such a bad company relative to Avenge and Impala? But you're most probably right. I would <laughs> prefer... So with prefer, regret. Yeah, with <laughs> regret, I reluctantly accept Avenge, but a well-run, well-managed business. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 you, you're not, you, not going to go home and do self-flagellation and things like that. No. You can you live with Avenge, but you would rather have taken HCI or not? Uh, no, I think I would, uh, Avenge is a fair pick. A fair pick, okay. Yeah. Oh, he's reluctant, is he? He's, he's a street fighter when it comes to this game. All right, so you, you, get, uh, you, you, get, a, you get a pass on, on Avenge. Well done on uh, that one, Nick Norman Smith. Lance Williams, your final one this evening is massively courageous. And I say it's massively courageous because I haven't seen this company doing anything constructive in this market ever. Peregrine Holdings, in 30 seconds, why? Peregrine is a financial services company with high quality financial services assets. Citadel Private Wealth Management, uh, Peregrine the Hedge Fund Management Business, Proprietary Investments and Peregrine Capital, the stockbroker. They recently wrote off most of the goodwill in Stenham, so placed on much 
better footing, highly cash generative, high quality assets with upside in the offshore side of the business, given, especially given the recent RAND devaluation. Why does the Strong share dividend price yield? Move? I think it will start to move. But it's been sitting at about 10 or 11 bucks since I was at my mother's breast. And, it, and it's recently started to move. Um, there's a strong focus on capital management in the business and there's, it's well capitalized to potentially over capitalized. They've paid out special dividends in the last two years with a strong underlying dividend which will continue. Now that's, that's an important point because you look at the share price movement of Peregrine and you go, you must be joking. Why would you ever put money into this? But if the dividends and the special dividends historically have been strong, this is a sitter, surely Nick. Uh, look, remember they've benefited from what's been a very strong rise in, in generally in global markets um, over the last few years, and that of course drives performance fees and assets under management, etc., etc., etc. So that's a bit of a concern. Um, the other big concern is in the hedge fund business. Uh, you know, these are businesses that have typically charged exorbitant fees, and they've been found wanting because uh, returns have generally in the industry not lived up to that. So, can can they continue to generate such healthy fees? Um, going forward yeah. because the industry is under a lot of pressure. We've seen hedge funds like Man Group, which has been absolutely annihilated. The hedge fund industry also, is, it, it's tough to do good PR on the hedge fund industry. If you look at the share price performance, I would love to see a graph of Peregrine and Coronation sort of priced to a level of, say, 100 bucks five years ago, because Coronation has grown 600% over the last five years. Peregrine hasn't. Yeah. The straightforward, long-term investing, nice and simple, unit trusts, RAs, boom, Coronation has, has wiped the floor with the Peregrine. It's been hard to compete with a very strong rising market, and I think that's what's worked against Peregrine in the past and what will work for them going forward. I don't when think markets go ropey, wobbly, and massively yes, volatile, correct. Peregrine is a better place to be than a coronation. 100%. So it's been hard to beat long only, but I think now's the time for hedge funds to come into their own and the offshore investments. So if you, if you were a coronation shareholder, would you sell some of your coronation shares right now and switch them into Peregrine? There's a nice question. I'd sell the coronations, but I wouldn't uh, switch, switch them into, into Peregrine. Peregrine no. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, and you know, you, you always want a business with high barriers to entry, very tough to replicate. Barriers to entry in financial services generally, other than retail banking, which takes big licenses, are relatively low. So you've got a lot of competitors out there. So the coronations of the world, the Alan Grays, the Lentices, there's so and many out there. a world of unlisted guys who don't have to jump through the same uh, logistical hoops and the same sort of regulatory hoops that the listed guys have to. So exactly. They don't, they don't have those, those assets in the ground, the hotels, the casinos, okay. that kind of thing. You, you, so, so what are you doing then with Peregrine Holdings? I'm shooting it down. You're shooting it down. Which brings us to the point where I've got to make a decision. I've got to pick the winner. Nick Normansmith from Lentis. Hoskin, Impala and Avenge. A reluctant acceptance by Lance Williams of Avenge. Although I think the Impala Platinum pick is courageous but could very well be time, yes. Yeah, the share price might go to 80, 75, and even 70 bucks before it goes to 150 once again. But hey, you can't pick an entry point every single day of the week. Lance Williams from iCapital. Standard Bank was accepted very generously um, by Nick Norman Smith. Remgro and Peregrine, however, were shot down. It's now time for me to make a pick, and only because he's got a small child and needs to hide away from his family week after week after week, and this is the only place where he will find sanctuary. I think, Nick Norman Smith, you can stay. I'm afraid, Lance Williams from iCapital, you were let down by Peregrine. Do falcons fly higher than Peregrines? I don't know. Well, Peregrines really are falcons, aren't they? Well done to you, Nick Norman Smith. This is your first ever victory on the program. One out of two is not bad. So Nick Norman Smith goes into next week's round against another victim. He's from Lentis Asset Management. Congratulations to him for surviving. And two weeks into fatherhood, He's not looking too shabby yet. If you want to see the bags under his eyes, join us again next week when the baby is three weeks old as we go to the most vicious stock picking show on television right here on CNBC Africa. Please let me know if I made the right decision tonight and watch uh, which stock picker impressed you the most. Tell me I'm an idiot. I don't mind. I'm perfectly used to it. At Bruce Business, that's on Twitter.com. Until next time, join us then when we continue to pick out winners and shoot out the rest. Good night.